Hello everyone, this is Kestrel Raptorial. It's Christmas 2018 and I want to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! The very first set that came out, The Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's hard to believe it's been 16 years, but way back in 2002, the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime and trading card game had just come to North America and along with the Yu-Gi and Kai Bastarder decks, the Legend of Blue Eyes was the first expansion set that had some rare and iconic cards, uh, mostly made up of normal monsters pulled from manga and anime's characters' decks, in addition to the first wave of field spells and very low equip spells that gave a tiny bit of support to various monster types, but mostly these were monsters with very low attack points. Uh, some types were uh, had barely any members at all. Uh, the plant types had only a couple. Uh, the insect types had only one. The sea serpent types had only a couple. Were uh, those went unsupported for a very long time. Uh, the dragon types were probably the strongest types of this set. I have finally put together a collection of the entire Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon set. So, um, the, so probably the most highly sought after cards were uh, the Blue Eyes White Dragon, the Dark Magician, although uh, the Dark Magician in this set is a less of a less interesting artwork I think than the one that came in the Yugi's starter deck. Uh, Yugi monsters, Kaiba monsters. The Exodia cards were first released in this set. And along with the secret rare cards, I think there, there's two of them, um, those are really the prizes of this set. Most of the other cards are unremarkable, though there were a few uh, very nice rare cards like Swords of Revealing Light, Regeki, the hollow foil polymerization. Uh, there, so there's a few treasures. So beginning here with the first page of the Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon set, the legendary Blue Eyes White Dragon, uh, Yugi's Dark Magician. This is actually, I think, my least favorite artwork for the Dark Magician. It's not that bad. It certainly has... Uh, bald colors, but compared to the Dark Magician that was released with the starter deck Yugi, the iconic uh, Dark Magician, the first one that appeared, the hand on hat, uh, I think it's a less interesting pose. Joey's Flame Swordsman, uh, the secret rare Trihorned Dragon. This card is pretty hard to get. Although, I, I, I think the cheapest I was able to get it for was $10. Um, there's really no point playing it. It's a dark attribute, 8 star, vanilla monster, uh, 2850 attack points. It's just kind of a little extra there. Skull Servant is number 4. Uh, secret rares are always numbered 0. Skull Servant was a joke monster for a long time. Um, one star, dark zombie, no effect, pathetic attack and defense. But there was then the whole uh, King of the Skull Servants and White archetype released uh, much later, after this first set, that uh, made it actually pretty good. Okay. So, and moving on, we're going to get into some normal, kind of boring monsters for a while. Mammoth Graveyard, Silverfang, Dark Grey. Uh, Namurko is really, really cute, actually. But it does, like, nothing. The 13th Grave looks like a slightly stronger Skull Servant. The Fusion Monsters were really, kind of, were really not kind of definitely pathetic when they first came out. Dark Fire Dragon, kind of 
kind of cool looking. Uh, kind of looks like the fire head of the five headed dragon. But uh, not really much to talk about here. So. Aquamador, that I think Kaiba had in one of his decks. Flame Ghost. Zombie. We have some pathetic equip spells. One for one for each type really. But none of them really did much. Uh, 300 attack point bonus. Ooh, then we get the, uh, we get the first field spells. Which, I do say, um, they're nice artwork. They raise attack points by, I think, two or three hundred of two or three types of monsters each. Oh, Dark Hole, Raigeki. Raigeki's awesome. Uh, but... A lot of decks don't much need it now. Uh, some still use it. It's been on and off the ban lists. Then we got those really low level damaging cards. Polymerization. Fissure. Fissure's actually a really good monster removal card. Uh, as is Trap Hole. But as you can see in the first set, there was only a little bit worth using. Rear Mystical Elf, nice. 2,000 defense. Another one of Yugi's monsters. I think there are seven pages in all here. Or... Gravedigger Ghoul, early monster removal card when removing monsters. Although it removes monsters from the graveyard, which didn't really mean much early on. Curse of Dragon. One of the very first uh, dinosaurs, Erebi, 1500 attack, earth attribute, not bad, but there were like no other dinosaur type monsters at the time, uh, but it looks, I think its Japanese name is Wild Raptor, so I did try to get three of them for the very first deck I built, which sucked, but I think everyone's first decks kind of sucked, because there just wasn't much choice out there. Um, Red Eyes Black Dragon. Very nice hollow foil. Reaper of the cards, which is has a kind of weird effect. Flip destroys one trap card on the field. Um, of course, you had to know it was a trap card first. Uh, Phantom. Uh, again, not much to talk about here. Spirit of the Harp is um, basically another mystical elf. That is a weird looking panda. Okay. Some more equip spells for certain types of monsters that, you know, plus a couple hundred attack. Stop defense, which can be used a couple times. Raised body heat was the, uh, was the one for dinosaurs. That's weird. It, it doesn't look like a dinosaur at all. And some weird choices for how some of these these artworks were along with the card names, some mismatches. But again, apart from a couple of uh, rares and iconic characters monsters, not much in the Legend of Blue Eyes set. Swords of Revealing Light, which was pretty cool uh, back in the very early days. Armed Ninja, uh, basically a reaper of the cards for spell cards. Man-eater bug. People were trying to get a lot of man-eater bugs because they were some pretty nasty non mon 
sorry, uh, monster removal. Uh, honey, honey. Flip, select one monster card on the field, regardless of position, and return it to the owner's hand. Uh, was one of the best. Uh, send back to the hand, clear the field, effect monsters. For a very long time, not a lot came out for a while. Not a lot of other options. And then we get to the last page. The last cards are really awesome. Monster Reborn. Pot of Greed and the Exodia pieces. The first set of Exodia pieces and Gaia, Dr Gaia the Dragon Champion. Exodia pieces were super ultra rare back when Yu-Gi-Oh! first came out. I mean, you could literally buy uh, more than one booster box and not get Exodia pieces. They were so ultra rare. Of course, now there are um, common and uncommon prints of them. The head of Exodia is still usually the rarest piece. Uh, these were all kind of equally rare, but uh, they are very nice holofoils. This camera doesn't quite do uh, them justice, how, how beautiful the cards look, but they are very nice. Shiny is very hard to get. Exodia soon became one of the first deck types. Of course, it, along with the Blue Eyes, Red Dragon, and Dark Magician, was one of the first core iconic monsters of Yu-Gi-Oh! But yeah, there is the Legend of Blue Eyes, White Dragon uh, booster set.